I thought I might give you a bit of background around who is Lely. And again, we're a little bit different because we are actually a Dutch company. Uh, we're not an Australian company, uh, but we have innovation in our DNA. And our primary focus is around the dairy sector. And in the dairy sector, we try and provide in our mission a sustainable and profitable future for all of our daily, uh, dairy farmers around the world. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look into our future, our future is actually a fully autonomous dairy farm. That's where we are trying to head to. Mm -hmm. We've got a long way to go, but we've got a pretty good history behind us in the last 20 years or so. Now, in those 20 years, since 1992, that was the very first autonomous dairy milking robot uh, that was introduced into the market. Uh, it was introduced in Europe, and back then it was a radical innovation. One of the key things that was presented by this robot, and it was a bit of a shift in mindset as well, is that these robots and all of these innovations actually focus on the cow, not the farmer. How do we help the cow get a better lifestyle on farm? And the concept was, if you have a stress-free, free-flowing cow across the whole farm, ultimately, you get a little bit more milk from them. And across the last 25 years or so, we've had about four generations of these robots, sorry, five generations of these robots that have come into market. And across each and every generation of these robots, we've actually been able to improve, use the newer technology, use the new innovations that have come out from across the world to integrate that into every generation of each robot that comes on. Now, along with that, because we have robots, we get a lot of data. So, how do we actually integrate all of this data into our innovations, but help our farmers better understand their operations and get better results every day? And the key to that is we build long-term relationships with our farmers. And that's actually a pretty crucial pillar in what we do as an organization. We work very closely with all of our farmers on their farm to understand how are our robots performing? How do we keep the robots working? How do we get the key insights out to the farmer so that they know what are the next big milestones that they need to hit? And we do that through a team called our farm management support team. So our farm management support are basically our, um, what you would call in the consultants word, world, the management consultants. They are the farm consultants for the farmer that actually work with them on the farm on a regular basis, build plans with them, review them, see how things are going. Now, there was a previous question in the, in the session before that around downtime. Downtime for us is also a crucial part because when you're milking cows 24-7, there 
is actually no time for the robots to go down. When we're actually dealing with cows, living beings, and they cannot get milked, it is a huge issue for the cow. So we have to have on the ground 24-7 technical support for all of our farmers out there. Now, in order to do that, we actually operate across 40 countries right now, across the globe. And in those 40 countries, we have, our, in our own business model, what's called a Lely Center. So 200 of these Lely Centers around the world, they are our farmers' right-hand people on the ground. And when I say right-hand people, it's they actually work with our farmers to understand what their futures, what their hurdles, what their objectives are. What do they need to do to help them out there? How to make sure that they've got proper service plans in place to keep the robots running as efficiently as possible. But also, what are some of the other things that they're trying to do on farm in terms of feed ratios or you know, AI? activities in the next couple of weeks or months. All of this stuff integrated with the data that is coming out from our robots and a lot of the other robots as well, including our feed robots, uh, our manure cleaning robots. You can actually integrate all of this into one ecosystem to provide one uniform solution for our farmers. And it's really important because there are different customer experience touch points when you think about this at different stages of our farmers' you know, operations. And we have to be really good, not just really good, we've got to be better than our competition across every single part and every single customer experience for our farmer. So a lot of our farmers actually rely on us to help them understand what the future looks like in terms of dairy farming as well. You know, our farmers are very uh, time constrained, let's say. So they've got a lot on every single day every day of the week, you know, every week of every month. They have a lot of things and they're juggling a lot of different priorities. So for us, it's really important that we actually show them that there is, you know, there is always light at the end of the tunnel when there are issues on the farm. It's our experience that we can bring to the table to help out all of these farmers. And a big part of that is by understanding all of the different data points on the farm, how the farm is operating, and what are some of the big ticket items that can help them in the next couple of weeks or months. But it's a two-way street. So our farmers talk to us about what they actually want to achieve. And we help build those plans for them. And we help manage that through our data platforms. One of the biggest things for us is ensuring that expectations are very clear for both our clients and on ourselves at the very start. A lot of farmers, especially when you, when you talk about robots, the very first thing that comes to people's minds, robots and data, is 
This is going to save me a lot of time. I'm not going to do anything. Don't need to do anything. Again, that expectation of robot, robotic automation versus a fully uh, autonomous operation, the expectation is that they're both the same. Whereas the reality is they're quite different in essence. When you say robots, a lot of our farmers can think autonomous operations instead of just robots that do a specific task that can remove time and effort from that task only to allow a new focus into other different areas. So those expectations need to be kind of set very clear between both parties, especially in our situation where we make sure that our farmers are as successful as possible. And our farmers, of course, they want the return on investment ultimately. Automatic milking was actually dad's idea and he's an old school farmer so he I didn't mm. even think he knew what it was I didn't know what it was yeah. and um, he he heard about it and wanted to try it and then we learned about it and left our jobs and came yeah. worked on the farm. Last year when we were transitioning because we trained our cows halfway through the system so they were going through the herring bone and then into the robot we wrote off the year really before we went into it thinking that it's a big change we're not we can't expect that much of our cows but even so training went a lot smoother than we thought it got up and running quite quickly and we once we moved into the robot things improved a lot for the rest of the season so that was a pleasant surprise and then mm. this year uh, compared to last year we're doing a whole lot better production wise you get told all about how to train them, but when you're actually doing it, it's quite daunting. And I found that yeah. the support we got from Laylee with, with training, I mean, we literally couldn't have done it. You're sort of in a, in a haze, but you know, it's good to have technicians and trainers there that yeah. know what they're doing. And so if you don't know what you're doing, at least you have someone that can be like, hey, it's time yeah. to do this now. Like I think a lot of people think that because they're going through an automated system that you're not uh, in contact with them as much but the truth is without the distraction of having to stand there and cup cows you notice a whole lot more like when mm. I go into the shed to look at my cows that's all I'm doing mm. I'm focused completely on them and so even if a lot of the time the robot will pick it up a few of the times um, I will in the shed and then you know so some sometimes it's just because I'm around them more or because they're more comfortable. They're so relaxed that it's so easy to pick up on any kind of unusual behavior. And then other times the robot picks up on things that I'm really surprised it even did. I had one cow who always comes in. She comes in maybe every six hours and she always does. And the robot alerted me because she hadn't come in for 11 hours. And then I realized she got stuck somewhere. So things like that are brilliant. The system of detecting yeah. mastitis or lameness or anything like that is so much quicker mm. that you get on top of it yeah so much faster so we really had like you get like one or two clinical cases yeah. of mastitis not not nearly because I mean in an old system you don't know really about it until you see the docket and you see a spike yeah. and then you you don't know who it then is you, then you're looking around and so you've got to strip everyone out and yeah. find out who it is whereas on here it'll tell you who it thinks it is before you you, you even would even see, see it. it, yeah. Yeah, well we're doing astronomically better than we were when we were milking in the pit. I mean, it gives us, as new people to the industry, um, a way of seeing what changes we make and just seeing an immediate impact. So, mm. okay, we changed this a little bit. It, did it work? Did it not? Because Obviously the cows, everything is tested every day and there's plenty yeah. of data for us to reflect on. Automatic is a bit more, 
uh, accurate because it's not, like you say, it's not just a robot, yeah. it's not the physical cups go on the cow, you've got to include things like the grazeways, which mm. they, it sorts the cows for you, so you know, yeah. you, they go to a certain place wherever you want them to go and then you've got the computer system, which is a part of it as well, you know, you, you get yeah. to divert cows and you know, supervise cows and all that sort of thing, yeah. so it's, it's a lot more than just a robotic arm. Yeah, the automation them. I suppose starts at the paddock it's not just when they get into the shed because obviously i'm not going down there and pushing anyone out they mm. it's up to them to decide when they're ready for milking and you're obviously you're manipulating it from a distance so that's where your um pasture management comes in and that to sort of help the cows flow properly through the shed but yeah it's not just about when they're in the immediate shed obviously the robots help make that part of the process automatic but it, the whole farm runs in a different way now with cows just flowing all over the place all the time and that allows us to have um, more than two milkings a day and we don't have to stick to a set schedule. So The challenges in dairy farming are pretty much outlined by environmental improvements and comfort to the operator and, and better conditions for the animals. Our cows in this system are very happy and, um, and we enjoy that. People like to, like to know that the product that they consume is coming from a good place and yeah. obviously people don't, you don't see the ins and outs, the day to day of a dairy farm. And but so, I think the, the yeah. robotic or the automated system definitely when people can come and see the cows and see yeah. how calm they are it, it definitely mm. change it shifts the whole perception of yeah. dairy the dairy industry and dairy farming yeah and i think adding, adding the grazing element to an automated system helps mm. that because you can see they get to you know they're wandering um freely out the paddock and they're just hanging out all over the farm so yeah, yeah it's an it's a nice scene and it makes us happy to be a part of it, yeah. yeah. Sorry, there's a little bit more there, but uh, I thought I'd cut it a little bit because of the time. Uh, so, as you could probably tell, there's uh, there's two different generations managing that farm as well, and each of the generations actually stepped or took that leap into that kind of farming methodology for two different reasons. Yep. So the younger generation said. We don't want to come on to a dairy farm and, and do the old way of doing things. And the older generation, uh, you know, we're thinking about the future and sustainability and, and, and environmental uh, aspects of things. But as a combined solution, they came to an agreement to say, this is the kind of technology that can actually tick a number of these boxes. Um, when it comes to us as well, uh, with all of these expectations, one of the biggest things that we tend to focus on uh, is our team as well. Uh, so we try and keep a very high standard of the team members that that we bring on board, uh, because you know they represent a higher level uh, for our farmers. They've got to be bringing and adding value to them, uh, but. It's all, uh, it's all for the benefit of the farmer, but more importantly, like I said at the very start, for us, it's all about the cow. The cow is our customer, first and foremost. And I thought I'd close this off by not me kind of regurgitating a lot of the stuff that, that you've probably heard before, but... Uh, uh, we've been fortunate enough to actually have one of our uh, clients in the region, uh, Josh Clark, uh, and he's going to talk a little bit about his experience adopting this technology from a from a farming uh, a farmer's perspective as well. So, Josh. Yeah. Um, so, I come from a place called Malil, just outside Mount Gambia, just north of. Um, I'm a third generation dairy farmer. Uh, so my grandfather bought the property back in 1938, um, started a dairy farm slash pig farm, and then got into dairy, uh, got rid of the pigs, uh, went into a nine-a-side swingover herringbone, and then a 12-a-side 
And then my dad built a 20 a side swing over herringbone that was supposed to only have a maximum of 240 cows. Um, about five years later, <laughs> we were up to like 300. Um, so back in um, 2002, um, my dad passed away and me and my brother took over the farm and uh, also with my mum. And from there on, we were milking lots of cows in a, in a shed that was probably too small. And we kept on saying, oh, in five years' time, we'll put in a new dairy. Yep, no worries. And we eventually got to the point where we were milking 360 cows. It was taking seven and a half hours just milking cows a day. Uh, and it was just taking too long. Um, there were three people milking the cows. I was one of them, my brother, and we had another worker. So uh, pretty much it just took too long to milk cows. Um, so we were absolutely going to put them in a rotary. <laughs> um, but when we were talking to um, our, our local dairy supplier, um, he also sold uh, Laley robots. And our criteria was, with my brother and myself, was that we wanted a one-person operation uh, for a dairy. And a rotary, as much as they can put as many bells and whistles on them as you like, um, you cannot get a one-person operation because you've got to bring in cows and you've got to milk them and go stand there and physically milk the cows. So robots became a, uh, an avenue that we were seriously looking down. Um, we still had a few doubts about the grazing system and things because they are prominently a barn set up system, but there are dairies that we had a look at that were grazing systems and um, it seemed to work. So we went down that avenue. Um, and yeah, so back in, uh, since 2018 in November, uh, I think it was the 13th, we, uh, we started milking in the robotic system uh, and I have not looked back. The first three days, possibly, because they were 22 hour days <laughs> we were working, putting uh, 374 cows through the shed for the first time ever. Um, but yes, it, it's worked very well since then. Um, the first six months uh, were not seamless, but since probably about July, it's been working really well. Um, the the things, the benefits that we've been seeing from our old system that was a very old school system, we hand wrote all our AI dates and all that stuff. Uh, now going to the, the Laley system and with the T4C, T4C system, um, which is the computer data that you see on the computers, um, we are having, you rock up in the morning and the system will draft out the cows that are on heat in the yards and we go in there and we can AI the cows off all the data. We can go through all the data because every milking we're getting information, more information every milking than we were in the old system. We used to do herd testing once every six weeks. We're getting more information for every milking now and it's just blown apart all the, all the extra data that we can go through and we can fine tune uh, what cows we're gonna AI, what are we gonna AI it to, is it gonna stay in the system, is it giving enough liters and all that kind of thing. So uh, having that data there is just incredible, um, really good. Um, yeah, and I've been asked a few questions with, would I ever go back to the old system? And I will absolutely say no. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's certainly one our family, and it, and it suits in with us really well. Thanks very much. Thanks uh, everyone to to um, Rami and Josh.